So at um, uh, one of the places we, uh, to our customer, we suggested that, look, here are the few stores for which you replant the allocation according to our algorithms. Here are control stores, which are very similar to them, and keep your old algorithms. Okay, Let it run for uh, a period of uh, a certain time. It's uh, effectively uh, um, an allocation period, uh, as they would call it. And then let's look at uh, the trend adjusted, etc revenue at the end of the uh, end of that period and compare both of them and we saw net seven percent increase in revenue uh, there's other uh, setting where it's um, distribution network setting where uh, customers are uh, effectively the locations and uh, our customer tries to distribute different uh, products to these things and the question is that which products to uh, distribute slash suggest uh, to these end customers so that actually the turn increases and hence sales and revenue increases. And there they saw 11% increase. Ah. So I think um, lots of really interesting questions. Um, uh, to begin with, um, uh, just changing. So uh, one way to rephrase the question is that what are the questions at the interface of uh, Social science, social science and data processing. Okay, uh, just talking about one of the modern example, uh, polling results. We are, as current poll predictions across the world are showing, we are terrible at uh, these days predicting the outcome of results or elections for that matter. Brexit, we got it wrong. I hope we don't get uh, a United States, States presidential election wrong, but we'll see. Um, and so on. So clearly, that's one of the major questions that sort of we need to solve. And uh, I believe uh, uh, there are a few issues here. One is, of course, how we are collecting the data in the modern times. But more importantly, how we are aggregating it, uh, for lack of a better term, or putting it how we are processing it. And the reason we are not processing it right is because we've got the uh, models wrong in some sense. So if we understood how the data is generated and how to reproject it to the entire population later, uh, then I think we'll be able to get at least better than our current predictions. And that's a major challenge. Uh, um, there are such challenges uh, in my mind that exist in all sorts of uh, level in terms of uh, processing social data. Again, uh, think of uh, social marketplaces where people sell and people buy. And it's very difficult for us to figure out how to match them. Another such uh, setting is um, uh, is online dating sites. Uh, Tinder is somewhat gimmicky, uh, but if we take Tinder or uh, um, systems like that a little bit more seriously, really it's a very interesting uh, question of how to match different people. Because on one hand, everybody might want to uh, date or get matched to this uh, one un unusual person who is there on the, is on the system, but that person can only hopefully go with only one person. Um, on the other hand, if I start showing you everything, then of course anything else that I show you which uh, is the right match for you might be a little bit of disappointment for you. Despite the fact that you might think that sort of you have the right self-impression, most of us actually don't really realize that sort of we are putting that out of context. So understanding this uh, social behavioral aspect and bringing that into uh, computational data processing system, I think it's a, it's a great challenge and there are so many questions that are uh, completely unresolved. Uh, think of urban systems, um, um, transportation system, or for that matter, any of the uh, system where we are uh, thinking about public goods, right? Uh, take a century back and there was a time when we designed, we laid down uh, energy grid that's a time when we laid down, uh, uh, I mean, we built freeways and that's a time when we built uh, a potentially sewage system and water distribution and everything. A century later, we're still there. We've not innovated. A key innovation that has to come is now that we've got these, all these smart sensors, let's try to understand how to integrate those sensors into designing our system. Everybody's talking about automated energy grid. We're talking about smart transportation and so on. But all of them, again, require the fact that we as engineers should not just design that. 
it's very, very important that we understand that its end users are people, and people do act idiosyncratically. They don't act rationally. There's not one model by which they act. So it's understanding that behavioral model, uh, thinking about it carefully, and then engineering systems around them, rather than first engineer the system and then make people behave the way system expects them to behave. Uh, so I, I feel that sort of this is a, um, the surface area is massive, and uh, people like me are just sort of touching a small, uh, a small element of that.